Are you unsure how to adjust your Rainbird sprinkler? Do you need to make just one small change, but messing with it feels like operating a spaceship? Today, I'm going to show you how to make adjustments to your Rainbird 3500 series rotor. If you're looking to adjust a Rainbird 32SA, don't worry, it adjusts in the exact same way as the 3500. The 3500 is the exact same design, just built to be more durable. Understanding the adjustments on a sprinkler rotor like the Rainbird 3500 might seem a little tricky at first, but don't worry. I'm here to explain everything and show you in a super easy way. My goal in this video is that you should only need to watch it once. So first, I'm gonna do the quick, no-nonsense guide, and then for the rest of the video, I'm gonna break it down in depth for you. To make adjustments to a Rainbird rotor, all you need is the Rainbird rotor tool or a flathead screwdriver, because the two adjustment slots on the top of the rotor are simply screws that are covered up by this rubber top. The only thing a flathead screwdriver can't do that this can do is lift it up for replacing or inserting a nozzle. To adjust the arc, which is how much the sprinkler turns, set the left stop by turning the sprinkler head to the left until it clicks where you want it to start. Adjust the right stop using the screw marked with a plus and minus. Turn it clockwise to make it turn farther to the right and counterclockwise to make it turn less. If you mess up the left stop or if your sprinkler is over 10 to 15 years old and doesn't have these adjustments, we'll show you how to fix that later in the video. We've set chapter markers so you can easily skip forward to that part of the video. To adjust the radius, which is how far the water sprays, use a flathead screwdriver in the top adjustment screw inside the arrow, turn it clockwise to make the spray shorter, and counterclockwise to make it go farther. That's the basics. But now, that sounds simple, right? There are some quirks to rotor heads that will be useful for you to know, so you can avoid kneeling down in the hot sun, getting all wet and ultimately frustrated because something unexpected occurred. I'm going to share some tips, some tricks, and some important mistakes to avoid so that you have everything you need to know. Let's look at all the main parts of the rotor so you can understand how it works. All right, with the head pulled up, you can see all the parts of the sprinkler. So right here, this part that's usually buried in the ground, that's the body or the case. Coming up from that, we've got the stem, also called the riser. Up top is the turret. That's the part that actually moves back and forth while it's running. And finally, right at the very end, we've got the nozzle which is what sprays the water. All the adjustments on the Rainbird 3500 series can be done at the top of the turret cap. Here, we have three different slots. First is the radius adjustment slot. We have the pull-up slot. And here, we have the arc adjustment slot. On the radius adjustment slot, you notice that there's an arrow. This indicates where the water is gonna come out from, and it's lined up with the nozzle. The radius screw allows the radius to be shortened by up to 35% without even changing the nozzle. And this can be adjusted while the sprinkler is in operation, like you can see here. If you need to make more than a 35% adjustment to the radius, you'll need to change out the nozzle on your rotor. Check out the video in the top right or description below if you need to do this. Here, on the middle right side of the turret, we have the pull-up slot. You can use the Rainbird rotor tool by inserting it into the pull-up slot and then twisting it 90 degrees. And as the name suggests, pull it up to reveal the rotor nozzle. Here on the arc adjustment slot, that is where you can change how far the turret turns to the right during operation. You can see a plus and a minus. Turning it clockwise or towards a plus is gonna make the rotor turn further. Turning it counterclockwise or towards a minus sign will make it not turn as far. The rotor can be adjusted to spray anywhere from 40 to a full circle at 360 degrees. Now note, anytime you adjust with the plus or the minus on the arc adjustment slot, it's only going to change the right hand side. To change the left stop is a little bit different. I'm going to show you how to do that here in just a moment. For adjusting your radius and arc, you won't need to use the pull up feature. All you really need is a flathead screwdriver. But if you want to keep the turret head pulled up for easier access, like if it's buried in some tall grass, you'll need a pull-up tool. If you don't have a Rainbird rotor tool, pull-up slots are universal, so any rotor adjustment tool will have this same ability to do this. We recommend that you use an adjustment tool to avoid damage to your rotor, and I've placed links to my recommendations for rotor tools in the description. But if you're particularly handy, you may find an alternative to work in a pinch. If you have the 3500 rotor, there is a secret trick for pulling up the turret head. Every 3500 rotor comes with a rack of nozzles, and the nozzle mold is actually designed with a pull-up tool at the end here. While this plastic is thin, it's enough to pull up a head in a pinch when done gently. As far as we've seen, this feature is only on the nozzle rack included with the 3500, and doesn't come with nozzle racks sold individually. Just remember, never use a metal tool on the stem. 
It may sound great in theory, but you don't want to use channel locks, pliers, or wrenches to hold up the turret. It can scratch the turret, which over time is going to cause friction that wears against the seals, and eventually it's going to start leaking. And when the seals are leaking, it's not going to be able to hold pressure underneath the turret, so it might not pop up. And even if it does, it's going to be spraying water where you damage the seal. At that point in time, the entire rotor has to be replaced. If you've ever had a rotor suddenly stop popping up, that could be why. Instead, grip the turret like this. Okay, now that you have the basics and you know the different parts of the rotor, let's take a more detailed look at adjustment because there's some nuance there that's important to understand. Let's start with the arc adjustment. And recall, this is how far the turret turns during operation, anywhere from 40 to 360 degrees. This you can use to keep the spray from the rotor from hitting things that you don't want to, like the side of the house or the garage or the sidewalk or a driveway. This rotor, like most rotors from most companies, come factory installed at 180 degrees. When you're adjusting the spray arc, each 90 degree turn will add or remove 90 degrees, depending on which way you're turning it. When the maximum arc of 360 degrees or the minimum arc of 40 degrees is achieved, you hear a ratcheting noise come from the rotor. That's a signal not to manipulate it too much more or you risk damaging the gears. First thing you want to do when you're adjusting the arc is to find your left and right stop. This way you know where it's already spraying to see what you even need to change to begin with. First, we'll find our left stop. We're going to turn it counterclockwise, and now we can see the arrow on the radius adjustment slot is pointing this direction. That's our left stop, and that is where the spray starts. Now, let's turn it to the right and find our right stop. And you hear the click and it stops, and now we know where our rotor is spraying. It ends right here, and it begins right here. So, we're at about 210 degrees right now. But maybe we want to make this a little bit smaller. If this rotor is in a corner, we may only want 140 degrees, for example. So we know where our left hand stop is. Let's use the arc adjustment slot. And recall that only adjusts the right hand stop. And let's decrease our arc until we're at about 90 degrees. Using the Rainbird tool or a flathead screwdriver, simply insert it into the slot and begin turning counterclockwise or towards the minus sign. Now, let's see where our right stop is at now. Much too short. We're down to about 40 degrees. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna turn it towards the plus sign or clockwise. Now, let's see where our stop is at. There we are, we're at about 140 degrees. Now, if you're having any difficulty with this part, you can actually do this while the rotor is on. That way you can see where it begins and ends with the stream of water coming out. If you want to adjust the arc while the rotor is running, Rainbird recommends adjusting the arc adjustment screw only in the direction the rotor is turning. In most cases, it's best to make all the adjustments that you can using the right stop with the arc adjustment slot. But sometimes you're gonna to have to change the left. Now this first method to adjust the left stop only applies if you have a Rainbird 3500 model that's, that has an adjustable stop. Try this first and only move to the next step if this method doesn't work for you. For newer 3500 models, first turn the top until you find your left stop. When you hear it click at the left stop, you know you're at the very start of the arc. Now, it's important to always remember where your right stop is when making adjustments to your left. That way, you don't accidentally overshoot past 360 degrees and risk stripping your gears. To adjust your left stop, simply continue to rotate the turret. You should feel a soft click that you might not hear. If you hear a louder click, you'll want to stop there or you risk stripping the gears. The louder click is almost like a ratcheting noise and it means that you've hit the right stop at 360 degrees. There we are. We've adjusted our left stop so that now, when the rotor sprays, that is where it begins. When you check your arc, listen for the little click that signals that you've reached the end of the arc. When you're adjusting it to run at a full circle, when you've achieved the maximum 360 degrees, you'll hear a ratcheting noise. At that point, you shouldn't manipulate the rotor too much more or you risk damaging the gears. Once you reach 360 degrees, continuing to ratchet further left will still keep the arc at 360 degrees. 
but it will push both the left and right stop over simultaneously. If you desire an angle less than 360 degrees, you'll need to readjust the right stop. If you go too far with your left stop adjustment, you'll need to rotate the entire rotor back to set the left stop correctly, as it only adjusts in one direction, and then from there, you'd adjust your right stop accordingly. That's how you adjust the arc on all newer Rainbird rotors, but what if you have an older one? In that case, the left stop is actually fixed and cannot be changed. To adjust the left stop in those cases, first you want to position the turret at the left stop. Then you'll probably have to dig around the body in order to get the leverage you need to adjust the stop by tightening or loosening the entire body. You could use some channel locks to reduce or eliminate the need to dig. Get a hold of the body, not the riser or turret, and twist it gently to adjust by tightening it like this. But don't over tighten or you do risk damaging the female inlet on your rotor. In addition to tightening it to change it, you could also loosen it a bit if you needed to, as long as you're not loosening it enough that it begins leaking. Remember that you're just tightening or loosening the body on the riser it's threaded onto, so there is a limit in either direction. If you tighten too much, you risk cracking the riser or rotor body. If you loosen too much, you could cause a leak or completely unthread the body from the riser. The other way to change the left stop, like always, is first turn until you hit the left stop. Then, unthread the cap, and then remove the turret from the housing until you can spin it freely. Then, turn it to where you'd like the left stop to be. Push it back into the housing, and tighten your cap. Now, let's take a closer look at radius adjustment. The radius adjustment slot, which is in the same spot where the arrow is that shows you where the water is going to come out, is very easy to use. All it is is a screw that you can tighten or loosen to increase or decrease the radius. The screw is also what holds the nozzle in place. First, let's take a look at that. You can see there's a nozzle. The screw comes from right down here and it adjusts radius by blocking some of the water when you thread it in. I'll show you. We're going to insert in and we're going to tighten by turning clockwise, righty tighty. Now you can see the screw. In most cases, it's best to adjust the radius, just like the arc, when the unit is on so you can see the actual effects of your adjustments. When increasing your radius, about five to eight full turns of the screw is all you can do. Any more than that and your nozzle will fall out during operation. If that happens, just grab your nozzle and seat it back into place and screw it back in just enough to keep it secure. You can test this by using your tool and gently prying at this slot. If it doesn't pop out, you're good to go. If you need to make more dramatic adjustments to your radius, you'll need to swap out the nozzle, which is quite simple to do. Check out the video in the top right or description below to learn how to swap out your rotor nozzle. If you found this video helpful, drop us a like below so that it can be helpful for others as well.